Hey there, fellow dreamers. This will be my first comic book review and fulfills a request by the poster resident antagonist. The first comic I ever recall getting and still have to this day is Marvel Comics Spider-Man Storm and Power Man Battle Smokescreen from 1982. It was a public service announcement or PSA free giveaway comic in conjunction with the American Cancer Society. I don't recall where I picked it up though one assumes it was at a doctor or dentist appointment and the like. Spidey has long been a top favorite of mine, a lovable loser, a struggling underdog, and a fighter who uses a sharp wit against his enemies, equally as effective as his fists and webs. I may have already been familiar with Spider-Man at the time, but I'm pretty sure this was my first introduction to Storm and Power Man. There's nothing in the book that I can find to indicate which artist did the cover, or who did the writing and interior art. I also wasn't able to find an official source online. So let's review Spider-Man, Storm, and Power Man and see if the trio can kick the smoking habit. Looking at the cover, we see Spider-Man swinging in as a group of runners look on puzzled and concerned as the villain smokescreen casts smoke at Spidey. Though Storm and Power Man share top billing in this issue, they only appear on this cover as decapitated floating logo heads in the top left corner. The inside front cover gives one panel recaps of each of the hero's origin stories. Spider-Man bitten by a radioactive spider, Storm born a mutant, and Power Man a Captain America knockoff. I'm still impressed by how both Spidey's original outfit from the 60s and Storm's outfit from the 70s still hold up today. This attire of Storms created by Dave Cockrum being my favorite out of all the different Storm outfits. As for liking Power Man's original costume, not so much. I imagine the disco costume looked silly even in the 1970s when it was created, and the more dressed down modern version of the character is a welcome change. We open on a track meet where teens from across New York City have been brought to compete. Power Man is there in a role of coach, and Peter Parker is there to photograph the event. Power Man is especially concerned with one teen named Brett, who is really underperforming. When Luke takes Brett aside to question him about it, Brett's girlfriend, Carol, covers for him by saying, What's the hassle? Brett can outrun any of the other kids. He's just taking it easy. Come on, Carol. I need a cigarette. Luke Cage looks on as Brett storms off and tells Peter he's going to handle the situation his way. So Power Man follows Brett to a local social club where he's been hanging out, and we meet some fat, bald villain who creepily likes to hang out with teenagers. We like faces around here. Have a cigarette. Maybe your friend would like one. Sure, why not? Cigarettes will make me look cool, just like my giraffe-inspired shirt. Power Man is clinging to the side of a building, trying to get a better look at what's going on inside when Spider-Man comes swinging in. Keep it down. It's just your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, wondering why you're following a bunch of kids around. We'll have no free candy vans around here, mister. Luke explains that when he began coaching Brett's team, Brett had dreams of the Olympics, but something happened to him and he began to change. Probably had something to do with the sky turning green. That's when he met Carol. He began hanging out with some strange friends of hers. The Sesame Street Muppets. Keeping late hours and skipping practice. And he started smoking. Spidey's spire sense is triggered and he warns Luke to hide as two goons burst through a door on the rooftop. Jake, I thought I heard something up here on the roof. Ah, uh, he's just jumpy. Bit it was a cat or something. Let's go back in. And what's up with this door the goons came out of? Is it supposed to be as massive as a vault door? Or is that something else? Meanwhile, Spider-Man is holding back Power Man, but it looks more like he's trying to cop a feel. Luke and Spidey want to watch the situation, but Spidey says Power Man is too well known for surveillance, and so he brings in Storm. Power Man is initially unconvinced that Storm can handle herself against the bad guys. To which Storm replies, Oh, do not worry, Mr. Cage. I think I can ha take care of myself. And then uses 
the super-powered equivalent of pepper spray on him, knocking him into a tree. The next day in Brett's science class, the teacher is giving a lecture on the debilitating effects of smoking, such as preventing blood cells from carrying oxygen and constricting blood vessels, thus reducing blood flow. Good information all around. Also, check out this cross-section of the upper body. Apparently, it's a Siamese twin. The teacher begins reading off a laundry list of negative effects caused by smoking. Here are some of the short and long-term effects. Brett, don't tell me the lecture is that dull. If you dare say that, I'll shove this pointer right up your... Shortly afterwards, Brett encounters some of his friends, possibly teammates, who say they're counting on him and he better shape up, to which Brett just blows them off. Then we cut to Brett being welcomed by what looks to be the same bad guy in the green suit from before. But now he's slightly off model, with a completely shaven head and a bit thinner. Storm, who is hovering above, spies the three goons entering a basement and decides to pursue. So, the arcade is just a front. But for what? Pokemon tournament pit fights would be my guess. The three goons stumble around the dark basement, expositing their plan to win a large sum of money by betting against Brett winning the race by causing him to crash and burn. And that's when the main villain makes his appearance. I'm so glad, but I'm afraid you've been very careless. We have company, and I haven't even had a chance to vacuum it. Looking at Storm's face here, I question the composition. Sure, the completely white eyes are fine, but why do they appear to slant upward like that? Storm is hit by some kind of smoke gas and exposits to herself that she can disperse it using her mutant power, but she is suddenly hit by some kind of beam attack from the supervillain's smoke screen, causing her to collapse to the floor. Just now, I am not ready to have the world know of my existence, but soon enough the world shall hear of the man called Smokescreen. I shall create a YouTube channel about a makeup application, and it will receive thousands of views. So, someone's turned on the lights, and we get our first good look at the main villain, Smokescreen, and a title that reads, Where There's Smoke. There's a guy failing to use a grill properly. Concerned about the presence of one superhero interfering with his plans and possibly others about, Smokescreen decides to accelerate things by telling the green-suited goon to force Brett to throw the race. Our comic cuts to shooting pool with oranges, and apparently he's using the pointer from his science teacher, since that thing barely looks large enough to be a pool stick. So the goons tell Brett to throw the race, to which Brett responds by telling them to stick it. The goons respond by seizing Carol and threatening Brett to do as they say, so nothing bad happens to Carol. This ain't no game, kid. Wise up. Of course it's no game, kid. It's obviously a Game Boy. At that moment, Power Man and Spider Man crash through a wall Kool-Aid Man style. So Luke snatches away a pistol from Indiana Jones here and crashes the gun. Then Spidey webs up the trio of goons, and one of them shouts, We gotta run! Even though he's clearly immobilized by the webbing. Back at the track, Spider-Man and Luke Cage tell Brett and Carol they Kool-Aid manned their way into the social club after Storm didn't report in, and the two race off to try and find her. Carol comments that she feels responsible for everything that ha that's happened. It was my fault, Brett. They made me feel important grown up. They fooled me, and I got you involved. No, Carol. It was my own fool swelled head that got me into this. I too wanted to be like Kool-Aid Man. You've seen how big his head is? We see a one-panel montage of Brett pitching his cigarettes in the trash and getting back into shape. Good stuff. Power Man pops out from behind a bush and warns Brett not to overexert himself. Just do his best. The next day is the big track meet, and Brett lines up beside the other teens. Even if you ignore the fact that one of the teenagers has a very manly mustache, why is that other sprinter running while wearing glasses? Back at Smokescreen's illegal casino beneath the arcade, Smokescreen is thought monologuing to himself. Everything is going perfectly. 
Yeah, like how a trio of superheroes just took out three of your guys and stopped Brett from becoming your pawn. When this caper is through, I'll have enough money to control the mob sports betting scene. And from there, anything is possible. Like that YouTube makeup channel I told you about. In another room, Storm comes to after what must be at least a couple of days. For whatever reason, she's been left unattended by the goons with no restraints. I guess as part of Smokescreen's perfect plan. Meanwhile, back at the race, Brett is having trouble breathing due to not having had time to recover from all the smoke inhalation. Also, is it just me or does the coloring on the other runners make them look like they're all running around naked? Power Man cheers Brett on. Looking good, Brett. Come on, you can close it. Anyone else find it odd all the runners are dressed identically even though they'd be on different teams? So Brett comes in second place, possibly even third, because the guy ahead of him appears to have broken the ribbon while being behind said ribbon. Storm swoops down in a great shot and informs the others that Smokescreen is really behind the gambling operation. Our heroes smash into the arcade and begin to mop up the goons. Smokescreen flees with Spider-Man swinging in pursuit. And in this panel, it looks like Smokescreen has eaten too many bean burritos and has the winds. So Spidey webs up Smokescreen and remarks that they can breathe because they both have oxygen filters under their, under their masks. However, Smokescreen's mask doesn't cover either his nostrils or mouth, so I question how this is possible. And so our comic ends with the crooks getting hauled off to jail and Brett attempting to make amends with his friends and teammates. The superheroes tell everyone to give Brett a second chance since he tried to do the right thing and helped with putting away the bad guys and they welcome him back to the winning team. To wrap things up, this comic is great fun. I don't think I would have held on to it for this long if it wasn't. Sure, there are inconsistencies like the green suity goon going off model and smoke screen's ability to breathe despite having no discernible way to do that in his mask, but it's a good team up book and the non-smoking information is useful. It's also nice to see superheroes acting like superheroes instead of many of the modern day mainstream examples where they are devout communists. I myself am a lifelong non-smoker and haven't missed anything by not getting involved in the habit. I don't know if PSAs such as this one contributed to my not smoking, but they certainly didn't hurt. So thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one.